Hello again, everybody. Hi. We've got the cat with us today. <laughs> Say hello. Hello. <laughs> today we're going to look at a, 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 it's another little, just another little um, model, which is about raising an awareness about how we think and how that might affect um, by how we feel, how we behave. And today we're going to look at um, just three little examples of something called thinking errors, which almost all of us do from time to time. And as I said, we're just going to look at three of them. The first one, which I'm sure some of you have come across before, and this one's called catastrophizing. So if you could just hold up that example, Sheila. So catastrophizing. So um, catastrophizing is, we're just hold the back of it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> catastrophizing is when um, we take something that is comparatively small, and we blow it out of all proportion. We make it far, far into something far, far bigger than it actually is. So in this example here, he says, there's a wet patch on my wall. If I was catastrophizing when I saw that little wet patch on my wall, I might say to myself, oh my goodness, there's a wet patch on my wall. This means my house is riddled with damp. It's gonna cost thousands of pounds to fix. And because it's going to cost thousands of pounds to fix, that means I can't take the family on holiday. That means they all hate me. And we've went to that place just because we saw a little wet patch on our wall. And that would be an example of catastrophizing. <laughs> and all we're doing here is just showing, showing you a couple of little examples just to raise our awareness so that we can, we're not going to totally change the way we think overnight, but just to become aware and begin to notice when we do some of these thinking errors so that we can we can recognise them for what they are, hopefully help us see the reality of a situation and help us deal with that a bit better. And will these ways of thinking, where will they have come from, Rick? Have we developed them over years or absolutely like if if you saw one of the, the previous ones we did, especially individual map of the world, for those of you that have saw uh, that video we did a few weeks ago about you know, all the things that have influenced us, you know, even when we were about four or five years old that we're still carrying about with us now. Mm. A lot of that kind of stuff will be responsible for the kind of the kind of patterns we run in our head, including ones like these. Absolutely, mm. yeah. So the second one, which again some of you will maybe be aware of, is all or nothing thinking. How many of us have done this from time to time? So an example of all or nothing thinking might be, oh, I've eaten a cupcake. My healthy eating plan is ruined. I'm a failure. I might as well eat the whole box of cupcakes now. So again, all or nothing. I've got to stick rigidly in every little detail to the thing I've decided I'm going to do. If I break it, even in the slightest way, that means I might as well give up. It's all or nothing thinking. When in actual fact, you know, as you know, we, Fraser and others have said in the 12X programme all the time, yeah, enjoy a little treat now and again. Absolutely fine, you know. It's part of, part of their overall picture. If you have a cupcake, that's fine. If you go to dinner at a friend's house, mm -hmm. they offer you a biscuit, have a couple of biscuits, for goodness sake, you know. It's not going to shatter everything, ruin everything. It's perfectly fine. So try and identify, try and notice when we have these kind of thinking errors and see them for what they are. And don't let it, you know, ruin everything that we're, we're working towards. Final one. This one is called uh, mind reading. So an example of mind reading might be, oh, Jay walked past me there and didn't say hello. They must be annoyed with me. So when we mind read, we, we, we assume things. We take maybe a little mannerism from a friend and we'll, we'll take that little mannerism the fact that they maybe didn't say hello, and again, well, well, as if we've got the ability to mind read, oh, I know what's going on in their mind, and we start to invent things about what they think or feel about me or other people. Do we know that that's true? Absolutely not. So again, what's useful is just about beginning to notice when we do these kinds of thinking errors, it's not reality, it's not the bigger picture, we're ta usually taking one little thing and blowing it out of proportion making things up about it, having a kind of all or nothing approach or catastrophizing about it. So that's it. No task really. 
this week other than to just begin to notice when we do that and just become more aware of it. And if we become more aware of it, then hopefully we'll be able to manage those thoughts mm -hmm. a lot better going forward. Mm. Yes. Anything you'd like to add on that? No, no, I, I was just just listening to you saying that. I was just aware that I, t I think I tend to uh, mind read sometimes. <laughs> ah, they, they, yes. Is that, is that yes, friends? I think that's the one that I recognise. Is that friends or family or strangers? <clears throat> or? I think it's a lot of it's to do with, with, with work. I think when I'm, when I'm at work, I sometimes mm. mind read. Um, yeah, I'll project things onto things to people, but then I mean, I hopefully always check it out just to, yeah. just to make sure that yeah. that's what's going on. I think, I think, I think that's, that's the key <clears throat> checking it out because we assume things, but a good little phrase to remember is whatever we assume about something, mm. it's just a hypothesis to be checked out. We might be right, or we may very well mm. not be right. And that's it.